So we'll start with the course overview. Um, so the, 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 the overall course objectives, you'll see that I post um, um, learning objectives for each lesson within the Blackboard, but the overall course ob over objectives, the first one is to provide you an, a, an overview of retention systems uh, so that you have some idea of how, what kind of a system you would select for different, for different purposes. And this is, this is a kind of a chicken and the egg thing. We could either wait to the end of the course where we covered all the earth retention systems and talk about what they apply. But then you don't know why we're talking about them sometimes. So I choose to put this at the beginning of the class, and I've given you your first homework problem is an exercise to actually pick some retention systems, and you're going to have to get into the textbooks in order to do that. Um, so I realize you won't, you'll, you'll do a better job of understanding how to pick retention systems if we did this block at the end, but if we do it now, you have a better understanding of how they fit in the big scheme of things. So I do it now, understanding that really for you to get this objective, you need to revisit it at the end. Um, and then we are going to spend a fair amount of time on the theory of earth pressure. Uh, we, we all have some, uh, I mean, I think all of us can calculate rank and earth, earth pressures. We're going to spend a good deal amount of time in talking about where that really comes from, what the assumptions are, the difference between rank and coulomb in using um, log spiral methods. And then we're going to talk about uh, dynamic earth, uh, earthquake induced earth pressures. There's some really good new research on that that, uh, that tells you that Mononobe Okobe is probably not the best thing to be using, which we knew all along. And then we'll talk about uh, earth pressures due to compaction and some other things. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on earth pressure theory before we even talk about retain, retaining walls. Uh, and then we will go through, I, I divided the course into the, what the difference between permanent retaining structures and what I call earth retention which is a fairly common term uh, for braced excavations, that kind of stuff. Because the, the, the applications are very different and the approaches are very different. Uh, there, there, are sim there are similarities between them, but big differences too. So I, I, I'm breaking it into those two categories. So the first one, we'll be talking about permanent walls. And I'll be covering most of the, per most of the permanent wall systems that, uh, that are used today. The, the exceptions are I'm not going to be covering um, Reinforced concrete uh, cantilevered retaining walls, because we cover that in the undergraduate class. Uh, so if you really want to do that, you need to pick the undergraduate class. Or I think if you left this class, the only thing, really the only thing you'll be missing for doing that is the actual structural design part. Um, so, um, but we don't cover it because it's already covered in another class. So for those of you that didn't take that class, TS, um, you have to live with it. And the other one we don't cover, which is a very popular system, is, um, um, soil nailing, and that's because Dr. Young covers that in his, in his slope stability class. And, and whether you're using it for steep slopes or for um, retaining walls, it's really the same design principle. So it's covered in that class. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about earth retention systems for, brace, uh, for, for temporary shoring for excavations. Very different design approach, very different applications of the same earth pressure theories and things, but the way they're, they're designed is quite different. And, uh, so we separate them in, in the course. Um, so what do I expect you to know coming into this course? Um, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. Um, so this is, a, uh, this is a geotechnical course that's really appropriate for structural folks to take. I like, uh, in our undergraduate class, it, it's completely uh, uh, comprehensive, both in the structural and the, and the geotech side. This one's a little less so. Um, but on the geotechnical geotech side, we'll, we'll cover almost all aspects of the design and analysis. On the structural side, we'll cover a lot of the analysis techniques, but not so much of the design techniques and, and not detailing. Like, for instance, when we get to um, um, earth support and we talk about whalers, we're not going to go through whaler design and, and, and the, the details of... Uh, of stiffeners and the, and the whalers and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about how to size this. We're going to talk about how to size the major components, but we won't go through the details of design. And, and I'll do more on the analytical side than on the design side. I do that for two reasons. I'm not really qualified to talk about the structural design aspects of it. And, and, and for at least those of the geotechs, that gets into what we think are, is tedium. That's why we became geotechs, because we thought you guys would do a better job of that stuff. It's supposed to be a joke. You're supposed to be laughing now. Um, so now, what do, what do I expect you to have known coming into this? Um, so this is this course does not have any of our graduate geotechnical classes as a as a prerequisite. So the the uh, the ex expectation is you've had an undergraduate geotechnical engineering course. So we're re that's all we're really expecting out of you. Uh, those of you that had more, it'll parts of it'll be easier for you. 
Uh, but you, ought, you need, I expect you to, uh, to, to, when I talk about classes as well graded sands or fat clays, I expect you to understand what we're talking about. So you need to know the unified soil classification system. You need to understand what Atterberg limits are and, and what it means if I said a thing that the like soil's got a water content of 200% or a plasticity index of 75. You should have some ideas of what those things mean. Um, when we talk about consistencies of clays, when we talk about what a soft, you know, we're discussing excavations in soft clays, you should understand that's very different than we're talking about excavations in firm or, or medium clays. So th those consistency descriptions you should understand. Um, um, if we talk about sands, the, the equivalent for sands is relative density. If I talk about a very dense sand versus a loose sand, you should understand what that means. You should understand what it has to do with the, with the uh, shear strength parameters for that and, and, and be familiar with that. So if this is sounding scary, it's not, it's, it should, it's not hard stuff, but it's stuff that I am not going to cover. So make sure you go back, pull out your soil mechanics text, and, and review that stuff. Uh, in terms of compressibility, uh, you should know what an E-log P-curve is. We're not going to talk a lot of, we're not going to be doing a lot of settlement stuff. There's not a lot of settlement stuff, but we will talk a little bit about it. You should at least be familiar with how we talk, describe compressibility for, for soils. And the most important one for this class is understanding shear strength in soils. We're not, the, the advanced soil mechanics class is not a requirement for this, so we're not going to talk about uh, the, the more advanced topics in shear strength, but you need to ba understand basic more coulomb uh, failure criteria and how they differ for sands and for clays and the difference between normal consolidated clay and over consolidated clay. So pretty straightforward stuff that you should have gotten out of your initial geotechnical engineering class. And, and you really need to understand the difference between drain and undrain conditions. Um, and we will use the more circles uh, approach for talking about stresses and soils. It's a very convenient way to do that. A pull point's not super critical for what we're doing here, uh, but you definitely need to understand more circles. On the structural side, I expect you to have basic steel structural design, uh, bending and tension, um, either in allowable stress design and uh, or load and resistance factor design. I haven't decided yet how much I'm going to cover LRFD design on the on the geotech side. It's it's getting to the point where it's starting to become important, and I, I need to look at uh, I need to look at the syllabus later this week and figure if I got time to squeeze this, a class in on that. Um, it's becoming pretty important for those that work in transportation projects now. Um, on uh, reinforced concrete, you should be able to do the flexure and shear design. Uh, again, for components. We're not talking about systems, but just for components. Uh, here's the good news for you guys. Right? The out-of-pocket expense for textbooks is whatever it costs you to print them at your office. So, um, as our primary, our primary textbooks are mostly going to become for the FHWA manuals. These are all public domain documents. Some of them are not readily available, but I've discovered them all and found them for you and hunted them up and posted them on Blackboard. Uh, uh, this, the, this first text we're going to use, um, this is an older um, report from um, FHWA, but it does a really good job of talking about earth retention systems. This, this, uh, this particular uh, document talks more about, not about the design of specific systems, but about overall system uh, characteristics and how you select them. It's got a really nice selection guide. This is one of the first ones we're, we're going to be reading from. In fact, for you to finish the first problem set, you really need to get in here and read some of this stuff, because I'm not going to cover to the detail you're really going to want to do to, to, for that first problem set. You'll be able to do some reading in there. Uh, our primary um, text for most of the, the stuff we're going to talk about is the latest FHWA uh, re Earth Retaining Structure Design Manual, which is really 2008. Um, and it does have some LRFD design methods in it, although it's not, um, um, I could say not, not, I don't want to say not thorough, not complete maybe is the right way to say it. And so this will be our primary uh, um, a text to talk about earth retention systems in general. And then we're going to use a bunch of design guides when we talk about specific systems. Um, when we talk about earthquake engineering, there's a really nice circular from FHWA that covers uh, um, earthquake engineering in, in general. And there's one chapter out of there that talk about, talks about earthquake loading, although we're going to update that with some, uh, some um, more recent research. Um, and then for mechanically stabilized earth designs, there's a, there's a um, um, in, industry um, design guide that's put out by, and I won't remember the name of the organization now, but they're the ones that do the, the modular wall design. Um, it's, it's a little more up to date than this, but it's like 
two hundred bucks, and uh, if you're doing those kind of designs at your office, you might want to get it. But this will be sufficient for what we do, and it covers it quite thoroughly. Um, we talk about anchor systems. Uh, we talk about ground anchors. We'll be using this um, 99 ground anchors um, design information from FHWA, and then we talk about um, um, <clears throat> excuse me sheet pile walls. There's two really good design guides. Uh, these are all these are both both relatively old, but they're they're quite good and quite thorough. Uh, one is from the Corps of Engineers, and the second one is a really old one from U.S. Uh, Steel, back when Bethlehem, Pennsylvania was a dark cloud, and we U.S. made all kinds of steel, but it's a really good design manual. All that information is on Blackboard, and you should be able to get it uh, and download it. Uh, you may just want to download that whole library that's there. I'm not sure there's anything in that library that we're not going to use. If there is, it's small stuff. So, Did everybody find the library? Anybody not find the library? Anybody afraid to say that they didn't find the library? Um, so that's the good news. That's all our text. The, the, the sacrifice is on the earth pressure stuff, we're not going to have, the, I, I had a textbook I used last time I taught this class, had a really great theor, uh, discussion of theory, the theory behind earth pressure and stuff. So, and and the, these, these books by their nature have a less complete discussion, but I think we'll be fine. If I have to, I'll write up some stuff on it for you. Um, I've given you a really large bibliography uh, of of earth retention uh, documents that includes textbooks, conference, the conference proceedings that are that are important in earth retention if you're looking at those, uh, some individual paper, and a whole bunch of individual papers sort, sorted by topic. We're not going to be covering or you're not going to be reading all those. I just had put it together in, in the process of, of getting this course together and I thought it was a really valuable resource for you. Um, I haven't updated it too much in the last two years, so some of the newer stuff, uh, papers won't be in there, but it's a really good place to start. If you're working on walls and you need to look, you think you need to look up something, particularly there's some really great conferences that, that, that are some historic conferences. They do a, AS, the Geo, Geo Institute does an earth retention conference about every five or seven years, maybe it's seven or ten years. And some of those have some really great papers in them. Um, I am, going, I am going to ask you to do one page summaries of about 14 articles. I'm not sure that counts exactly right. Uh, and for those of you who have done this with me before, I'm, we're going to use a different method in this class. One is this class is big enough that I can't possibly read them all. And I'm going to try using Piazza. I think most of you are on Piazza. There's about four or five of you that have not yet uh, uh, gotten onto Piazza. And so I'll take a minute while we're talking about this to talk about Piazza. It's a, uh, it's a much better way. I've been looking for a long time for a way to collaborate with students online. And Blackboard's just a behemoth. It it's, makes it impossible to do. So this is, I think, a really effective way for us to communicate online. I gave you guys an icebreaker. I think most people filled that out. Thank you very much. For those of you who aren't online yet, you need to do that. And I sent out a second reminder today, so you should have an email. If you don't have an email from me about Piazza, then you need to come talk to me after class, because uh, either your spam filter is filtering it out, or I've got the wrong email address for you. Um, so we're going to be using that, and, and, and I will give you some specific instructions, that, but what I'm basically going to have you, each of you post the equivalent of your one-page summary on Piazza, and then we'll have discussions about each other's papers, uh, and, and perhaps I'll be able to get a chance to do a summary of what we all think is going on there. So I think it'll be a pretty effective way. I, I, did, I did it this way within Blackboard the last time I taught this class, and it wasn't particularly effective, but I think it was mostly because the system was really cumbersome. So I think it'll I think it, it'll, it'll serve the main purpose of the one-page summaries, which is to really force you to read the papers, write down someplace, and maybe if you're writing it down in semi-public among the rest of the class, it'll actually, you know, even, even be a little more impetus for you to try and be uh, thorough about what you're uh, you're writing. So I'll give you. In fact, I was hoping to do that today. I may not get it till tomorrow. I'll post up some instructions for the very first one, which is a really simple one. It's looking at some some historical. Every one of these conferences I've talked about has a a sort of the um, a history of earth retention up to the current, and it's really interesting. I have you read them over several decades, and it's really interesting to read them and to see what's changed, what's new, and you know what basically hasn't changed. So uh, that'll be the first one. Uh, so what am I grading? So uh, the one-page summaries will be about 10%. I hope it's uh, high enough up there to give you interest in it, and and small enough that it really isn't going to make any difference, especially when you consider the variance. As long as you're doing the one-page summaries and making sensible comments. There won't be a lot of differences between the grades for them. 
Um, the, there's going to be about nine problem sets. I think that's the right number. Uh, they'll be worth 30%. Um, I, I do not have a design project in this class. For those of you who have other classes, we, we, we do a design. We cover so many earth retention systems, I just couldn't find a way to get a comprehensive design project in the class. Uh, midterms and finals, 30% each. And if you add that all up, that's 100%. The midterms will be open anything except anybody sentient being or non-sentient being outside of yourself. So if you want to use digital stuff, that's fine as long as you're not connected to the internet and doing anything. I don't care. Um, so however you organize your work, you're welcome to use it uh, in the midterm and the final.